Good morning, MCC. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? No. No? Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. <laughs> I am Sandra Fontenelle. I am one of the deacons who are here to serve you in this community. Brent Hawks is on vacation. The flowers that you see in the uh, front here is a courtesy of a wedding yesterday from Ian and Rohan. And um, if you didn't get to see it, our Reverend uh, Brent Hawks was in the Toronto Star last Friday and he was talking about Jack Layton's uh, funeral. He's so if you do want to see it, go to Facebook and see Toronto and you can read uh, the article. It's actually a good article. And uh, if you are new to the church, we have something called a blue card. This is how we stay connected with you. So if you could please put uh, your names on, on the card and your address and your phone number so we can stay connected. And we say hello everyone who's watching us from around the world. And we have an announcement from uh, Lori Boyce, one of our board of directors. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, so, please join us on Sunday, August 26th, to celebrate Reverend Brent Hawks. 35th anniversary as a senior pastor of our church. Brent became senior pastor in August 1977 and is the longest serving senior pastor in our global fellowship of MCCs. And to celebrate this remarkable and significant milestone and for his dedication to us, we'll be presenting him a special gift of our appreciation. Should you wish to make a personal financial contribution, it will be accepted from August 5th to August 19th. The collective gift will then be presented to him on August 26th as a contribution to the renovations that he's doing to his home. Please use a special yellow envelope and close the order of service for gifts of cash or checks, and checks may be uh, made payable to MCC Toronto. Please note, though, that because it's a personal gift, uh, that there is no tax receipt. If you have any questions, uh, you can contact me, or Don Eastman is around somewhere. Thanks very much. Take care. And now we go to a one-minute celebration. And we do one-minute celebrations to acknowledge anything that's happened uh, throughout your week that uh, makes you feel all warm and fuzzy. So if you want to share with us, just stand up and say a few words, and we'll hold off on the applause until everyone has had a chance to make their announcement. Let's start with one. I just brought back from a three-week vacation in China where I got to climb the Great Wall. It's my wife's birthday today. <laughs> And we're celebrating tenor section of Dawn's back from the holidays. <laughs> uh, I celebrate our young Canadian Army. Yes. We celebrate birthdays and we also celebrate families. But if you have a birthday in August, if you just want to stand up, we'll acknowledge you. And we'll say a prayer for you. Don't be shy. Birthdays in August? Wonderful, wonderful. And if you are comfortable, just reach out your hand and say a prayer for these people. Loving God, we thank you for these individuals with a birth date this month. And we ask for your continued blessings and your abundance in their lives. And may they continue to feel your presence of love throughout mm. the month. Amen. Amen. After the uh, service, please feel free and uh, say happy birthday to one of our uh, birthday people. Okay. If you are family, 
and that is defined by however you define family. Please come on up and we will do a blessing for you. Hey, come on up! <laughs> Gracious God, be with each family member this month. Help each member to show kindness, patience, and love. May their bonds be strengthened, their uniqueness treasured, and your presence amongst them comes Amen. Amen. Thank you. This is the part of the service where we just introduce ourselves to people around the church. So get on up and mix and say hello. Introductions necessary? I don't think so. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our hot church. Church.
God, we come to you today with gratitude in our hearts. Thank you, God, for this day, for the warmth and for the rain. Thank you for this community. Thank you that we can gather here together in the knowledge that you love us just as we are. May we receive that love with joy and carry it out of this place with even more joy. In all your many names, amen.
how that sounds out there, but it was like having a thousand angels totally surround me up here. Thank you. You're invited to name people or circumstances as prayer requests out loud. This is that opportunity for you to have a one-on-one -on -one moment with the Creator. Let us pray. Gracious God, your abundance surrounds us and sustains us. We thank you for gifts of friendship and new beginnings, for life as it unfolds, and new opportunities for growth. We thank you for Brent and Diane's vacation of rest and renewal. God of grace, we know you hear our prayers. Spirit of hope, in our lives and in our world, there are many troubled by concerns. Some face the uncertainty and pain of illness. Some wrestle with anxiety and fear about work, about relationships, and about themselves. We pray that your healing love may touch these lives. We pray for the prayers and thoughts in our connection cards, for Deacon Darlene as she recovers from successful surgery. God of hope, we know you hear our prayers. Spirit of compassion, be with us as we face losses in our lives. Where there is disappointment, lead us to joy. Where there is grief, fill us with your peace. And where there is death, help us to say goodbye for now, but not forever. We pray for those in Syria. God of compassion, we know you hear our prayers. Breath of the universe, you have created us for joy. Open our minds to the gracious promptings of your spirit. Increase our trust and guide our hearts in the ways of the truth. God of many names, you transform us by grace and renew us in peace. sacred readings. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer. And a man who had been lame from his mother's womb was being carried along, whom they used to set down every day at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, in order to beg alms of those who were entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he began to ask to receive alms. But Peter, along with John, fixed his gaze on him and said, Look at us. And he began to give him the, his attention, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I do not possess silver and gold, but what I do have... I give to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, walk. And seizing him up by the right hand, he raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were strengthened. With a leap he stood up, and he began to walk. And he entered the temple with them, walking and jumping and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they were taking note of him as being the one who used to sit at the beautiful gate of the temple to beg alms, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him.
Our second reading is from Luke 6, verses 37 to 38. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. And do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Pardon, and you will be pardoned. Give, and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. These are our sacred readings. Let it inspire us and challenge us. Amen. who caused a bit of an uproar when he published an article entitled Why Do We Have to Have Sermons Anyway? Apparently a lot of people there who were planning on making a career out of preaching sermons found that question just a wee bit threatening. But his point was that Jesus never preached sermons. What Jesus did was he told stories and asked questions. So Don and I have been wanting to tell stories, and I've really appreciated all the stories that Don's told over the past couple of weeks, uh, because he has such a treasure trove of the history of our denomination, MCC, and the people who built the church that we call home today, and we are so blessed to be able to tap into that rich treasure that is Don's mind and memory, amen? I wish I had such a wealth of stories. Maybe when I'm Don's age, I will. Did I mention that Don went home with a cold? He's not here now. (laughs) But if I ever do have such a wonderful treasure trove of stories, it will be thanks to you all sitting here, because I think people sitting in churches should be warned that they will someday become sermon fodder. And if you're lucky, if you're lucky, I will wait until you're dead to tell stories about you. And if you're not, well, you've been warned. And I want to tell you about one of the saints who has gone on to glory, and her name was Pat Fletcher. Do any of you here remember Pat Fletcher? You are dating yourselves. But uh, I knew Pat when, uh, well, she was, she was originally part of MCC Toronto in the early history of this church, but I knew her when she was part of Christos MCC, which was a small MCC here in Toronto that I pastored until it finally had to close in 2009. And back in the day, people would often go back and forth between the two MCCs, and Brett and I have talked about this at length, and we've concluded that what often happened was people would get mad at MCCT, and they'd go to Christos. And then they'd get mad at Christos and come back to MCC Toronto. And someone else would get mad at MCC Toronto and come to Christos and so on, and it was kind of like the tide going in and out, you know? But back in those early days, Pat was a very faithful member of here at MCC Toronto. Not here, but it was long before MCCT had its own building, while we were still renting space 
to the tune of $150 a month in rent. Now, maybe to some of us, $150 a month is not a ton of money. But to MCC Toronto back in those days, that was a very big number, especially one month when they didn't have it. You know, churches close for all kinds of reasons, and often finances are a big part of it. When, when we were forced to close Christos MCC, a lack of financial resources was one of the reasons. And the week after we ceased having services at Christos, I heard from the folks at the church where we'd been renting space. And they said that a young man had shown up Sunday evening for our service, and we weren't there. And I still wonder what became of him and what he was looking for when he sought out that little MCC and if he ever found what he was seeking. So I want you to think about what might have happened back in that day when MCC Toronto didn't have $150 for rent. What if the church hadn't been able to continue? Who might not have found a place to hear that God loved them just the way they are? Who might not have found this community of faith? What if... Well, obviously that didn't happen, because we're here to hear and tell this story. And the reason we're here is that Pat Fletcher, who worked as a psychiatric nurse who did not have a ton of resources herself, was moved to go to Brent and write a check for $150. Do you all know what the butterfly effect is? Somebody smile and nod. You know, in chaos theory, it's the concept that the tiniest change in early conditions can affect the ultimate outcome of events in a very profound way. And it was originally posited in the field of weather prediction when it was suggested that if a butterfly were to flap its wings in the Amazon rainforest, it could create a tiny change in the atmosphere that when followed through all the changes and effects that, that ensued would ultimately alter the path of a hurricane in Florida. This is why when you're contemplating time travel, you have to be very careful not to go back and change anything in the past, or the future could be drastically altered, so be careful with that. <laughs> Pat's $150 was the flap of a butterfly's wings. Who's to say that you and I wouldn't be here today? Who's to say that this church wouldn't be here today but for her gift? Now, the title of this sermon is We Give, so I wanted to include the stories of people who gave of themselves and, and what they are and have to make MCC what it is today. And of course, I know, and I know that you know, or I hope you know, that that means way, way more than financial gifts. Preachers actually don't usually like to get up and talk about money and generally avoid it if we can. And I was, I was, he's still not here, right? I was actually kind of annoyed with Don when we set up this sermon series and I got stuck with the sermon I'm giving, although he swears now he wanted it. But the solution that most preachers find to that discomfort is to talk about the ways we give that have nothing whatever to do with money. And this is so true that we find our greatest joy in living a generous life in so many ways, in sharing who we are and what we've received, because that can make a difference in the lives of others. And that may come in volunteering, in creating community, in giving of ourselves. I was actually so impressed last night, I was playing around on the computer like I do too much, and I saw that somebody in this congregation had posted in their Facebook status, I'm determined to do volunteering of some kind. I need some meaning in my life. I need some meaning in my life. And I'm convinced that they will find that meaning in giving of themselves. And I'm convinced that in so doing, they will also find community. And I'm so impressed, actually, by the insight that they showed to understand that such meaning often comes from sharing of ourselves. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. I read this interesting quote this week from Carl Menninger, a famous psychiatrist, and he said this. He said, generosity is one of the essential components of mental health. We have found that generous people are rarely mentally ill. Generous people are rarely mentally ill. Generous people in every sense of the word who are generous with what they are and who they are and what they have, people who give back to the community, generous people are rarely mentally ill. I'm just saying. I'm just saying we have a pretty generous 
fairly sane congregation. Close enough. So, so why do I keep coming back to the notion of giving our resources? Well, although church leaders often shy away from talking about money in church, Jesus spoke about it pretty often, so I'm trying to get over it. And Jesus' parables and his discourses and his stories often had to do with material possessions, with the use of money, with celebration of God's material gifts, with the abuse of wealth, with meeting the needs of the poor and generous living. And these themes were picked up on by Jesus' earliest followers, reinforcing the principles he taught. So I think that, that every church today has to intentionally engage these themes frequently with thoughtful teaching that leads to prayerful reflection and ultimately to strengthening of our community. Our generous lives strengthen our community. Now, the word for community in the Bible is a Greek word, koinonia. Can you all say koinonia? Koinonia, good, there's gonna be a quiz shortly. And I apologize for bringing up Greek on a hot summer Sunday morning, but koinonia is an important word and it's translated many different ways because like a, like a diamond that has multiple facets to it, community also has multiple facets. And one facet of koinonia is translated as participation. And koinonia is also translated as contribution and as generosity, participation contribution, generosity, they're all essential elements of community. And if you and I are gonna have fellowship together, there's got to be that sense of community. There has to be some participation on my part and on your part. There has to be a contribution where I make a contribution to your life and you make a contribution to mine. And you never know, you never know when that routine contribution may be someone else's miracle. You change lives. And there has to be that sense of generosity. We can't have community without generosity of our time, our energy, and our money, of our resources, of all the different parts of our lives. So we really can't enjoy community and create community and strengthen community without these things, participation, contribution, generosity. And this was hugely important to the early church. And they wrote about it in their, their letters and writings. And I'm gonna give you a few examples from the Bible. Those of you who are taking notes can email me later for references if you're so inclined. But in the letter to the Philippians, it says, you became my partners in giving. And that phrase, partners in giving, is just one word in the Greek. It's the word koinonia, community. So you became my community. Then in 2 Corinthians, they begged us to let them have the joy of giving their resources for God's people. And that phrase, the joy of giving their resources, you guessed it. Koinonia, once again, the word for community or fellowship. And then 1 Timothy, be generous and willing to share. And that phrase, willing to share, is just one word in the original. And here's the quiz, what's that word? Koinonia. And that willingness to share with one another is what makes us a community, a generous community. And that willingness to share with one another, to share what we have, can be someone else's miracle. In the story from the book of Acts that Marilyn just read a few minutes ago. The disciples, Peter and John, encounter a man who has great needs, many, many needs. He was disabled. And in that time and place, the only way he could support himself was to beg in front of the temple. He needed money, and Peter and John didn't have any. Peter says, silver and gold have I none. And then, as Don reminded me, there you have it, the treasurer's report of the early church, no money. But Peter isn't done. He has something. He says, such as I have, I give. Such as I have, I give. And the gift he gave was the gift of healing, a very unexpected gift, and worth much more, I think, to that man than any silver or gold. You never know when what you have to give is going to be someone else's miracle. You never know what you have to give. And sometimes it's like the butterfly effect. You give something that seems so insignificant to you and you have no idea how much of a difference it's gonna to make to someone. And most of the time we never learn what the effects of our gifts have been. Today, however, some of you are going to learn. You know, when I sat down to work on this sermon, I chanced to look back at an old sermon 
in case there might be something worth stealing from it. And it was the very first sermon I ever preached in this church. And it was actually quite a long time before I worked here, before I was ever even a part of MCC Toronto. It was back when I was still the pastor of Christos MCC in 2005. And what it was about is of absolutely no consequence whatsoever. The most important thing I had to say to that that day was before I started preaching, and it was simply, thank you. See, as many of you know, in 2004, my late partner, Anne, was diagnosed with leukemia, and she had to quit her job. And I was part-time, very part-time at Christos MC, and I was also the part-time interim pastor at the MCC down in London, and I had to quit that in order to stick closer to home and care for Anne. And to put it mildly, things were kind of desperate financially for a while. And then, unbeknownst to me, one of Christos's members, who had previously been a part of MCC Toronto, one of those folks who got mad and went to Christos, who's back here now, went to Brent and told him what was going on. And again, unbeknownst to me, you all took up an offering. which completely replaced Anne's salary until she was able to qualify for disability. So when I came to preach here, first I needed to say thank you. The flap of a butterfly's wings. And here I stand today, once again, saying thank you. Thank you for that miracle for me and for Anne Thank you for all that you continue to do and give. Thank you on behalf of refugees sponsored and people fed through your generosity. Thank you for the places you volunteer and give back to this church community. And thank you for the work you do outside the walls of this building in the wider community. Thank you for the lives you touch in ways you don't even know and may never know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. showed us a way to a relationship with God, freeing us from whatever binds us, reconciling us with God, with each other, and with ourselves. And so we pray. God, we recognize those times when we have separated ourselves from you and each other. We have not always cared for, respected, and loved our world, our neighbor, or ourselves. It's in the very things we have done. And by the things that we have left undone, we open our hearts again to the renewal, the forgiveness, and the freedom that you offer. Hear the good news. God saying to us, Behold, I make all things new. In every moment you are loved, and so you are forgiven, free in the name of God who created you, who dwells within you, and who goes with you always. Amen. Please feel free to come forward to receive anointing for healing.
of love. Oh, baby, take a train, take a train, take an aeroplane, take a bus, take a boat, stay afloat. Don't stop believing in the house. Please reach out your hand as we bless our gifts. God, we offer these gifts, and we offer ourselves as gifts. Out of our abundance to your work in this community, your love frees us to be generous with each other and inspires us to action as we build bridges in this place and from this place to a world hungry for hope, for justice, and for peace. And so we commission these gifts to your service in this world. Amen.
Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up, up to God. God. Let us give thanks to our God. It is, it is right, right to give thanks, thanks and praise. It is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, loving God. Creator of heaven and earth, therefore we praise you. Joining our voices with all the company of heaven who forever sing to proclaim the glory of your name. this table, we are all God's people. There are no requirements to come to this table. All are welcome.
no death and no disease. Go now, rejoicing that God loves you. Thank you for coming and thanks for joining us on the web. And if you'd like to have a little bit more spirit filled uh, evening, come on back for 7 o'clock. And uh, I have good news. We've got cake in the back. It's birthday anniversary celebrations. Let us sing our closing songs. Mm -hmm.